the more the story is is at, at age 17 i had this belief that the way i looked inherently was bad that who i was inherently was bad and i was a kid going to uc davis i was a black kid who had a 3.3 gpa who never drank who had both parents at home whose dad was in the military and i felt inferior Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, it is 5.15 uh, p.m. Pacific time on Friday, May 29th. Uh, what's up, guys? It's been a while since I've checked in with you guys outside of the, uh, well, even then. Um, so I hope you all are doing well. Hope you all are staying safe um, and being healthy and being uh, careful in this environment. I want to... Um, First of all, tell you guys I love you, all of you who follow me, all of you who uh, have joined my virtual workouts, all of you who have gone to my speaking uh, engagements. Um, I love my friends, my family, everybody. Um, for those who follow me, you guys know I've been on this, uh, this journey to become the best version of me, to figure out what that means and to um, continue to grow in what I believe are my gifts. Uh, one of those gifts I believe I have or was put inside of me was a desire to be great at pulling out of people um, their best version of themselves to inspire, to motivate. What's up, Nick Corso? Um, to inspire, to motivate people. Um, and for the last two years, I've been I've been earnestly the right word, earnestly trying to to become this this motivator, this inspirer, to to embody what I've had inside of me for years, and to put all that that journey to work, all the journey, all the all the all the training, all the football, all the teams I've been on, all the people I've been around, all the all the great role models, all you know, the decade I spent in finance, having children, having a wife, having great friends, all of that has put me in a position, I believe, to do what God has wanted me to do, which is to, to speak to people, to inspire people, to make people want to be great, to make people to move away from the average, move away from the medium and want to be uh, what they know they are at the heart, which is great, right? But today and yesterday it's been eating at me because certainly god didn't put me on earth to grow as a speaker and a motivator just to help people lose weight just to help people be the top salesman just to help people be a great point guard certainly he didn't put me on earth just to do that so with all that's going on with all that's happened in the last week you know, I just felt compelled to speak and, and to put my training the last few years to not the test, but to a test, right? There's never the test. There's always a test, the next test. And I believe this is a test for me because, you know, it's, it's my thoughts are rambled uh, more so than usual. Um, but I do want to speak about um what the title says is well i always feel black and that's and that's you know that's 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 deep right i mean that that that's that's uncomfortable for people to listen to to say but i want to start with a story that i think will will illustrate just how how hard it is right so i show my arms a lot now Right, you guys know I, I wear shirtless sleeves a lot, but believe it or not, there was a time in my life when I didn't show my arms, when I when I covered up my arms, and oddly enough, it was after I had begun to get some muscles. 
Right, early on, I covered them up because I was skinny. And I didn't want to show anybody I was skinny. But I, I went to high school at Seaside in Monterey on the coast where the climate is cool. I went to college at UC Davis where the climate is not cool in the summer. And for the first week or so of practice, I wore a long sleeve shirt. In fact, on my recruiting trip to UC Davis, in the car, I wore a sleeve on the side of my body that was on the window side that the, that the sun hit. So I wore a sleeve driving to UC Davis from Monterey on the arm that was going to get sun to it. Now, why would that be? Why do you think I would cover up an arm, which at that point was getting bigger? I was already being teased for having biceps, right? And why would I wear sleeves at practice at UC Davis in 100 degree weather? It's because I did not want to get darker. And I'm not dark, right? I did not want to get darker. Now think about that for a second. How sad is that? That in my head, being darker was inferior. Being darker was ugly. Being darker was anything but good. Now, now I don't believe that. Now, now I, I walk around. In fact, yesterday I worked out outside just to get a suntan. Because now I realize that my muscles show better when they're darker. But the more of the story is, is at, at age 17, I had this belief that the way I looked inherently was bad. That who I was inherently was bad. And I was a kid going to UC Davis. I was a black kid who had a 3.3 GPA, who never drank, who had both parents at home, whose dad was in the military. And I felt inferior. So as I watch this George Floyd case and I and I see the you know the responses, I'm not gonna get into all the the political stuff and you know why are they doing that. That's that's a debate that I can get into another time. But I want you guys to understand that feeling black is something that I will always feel. And that's weird to me. I mean, think about it. Do you ever, I mean, if you're Caucasian or you're, or you're Asian, or do you always feel like you're Asian or always feel like you're a Caucasian? Maybe you do. I don't know. All I can speak to is what I feel. But, but I feel black often and it don't feel good often and i have an mba a master's degree in finance from a great university i have a home i've made lots of money in my life i've never been in trouble never been to jail never been drunk in my life in my life never been drunk right and yet i still get nervous when cops are behind me that's inherent. That's inherent inside of me. And I didn't grow up in Minneapolis. My mom did, as a matter of fact. I didn't grow up in Chicago. My dad did, as a matter of fact. I didn't grow up in LA or Oakland. I grew up on military bases. And yet that's still inside of me. An inherent feeling like you are not wanted here, that you are not as good as everybody else here. And that is a feeling that sucks. It's horrible. Because I don't care who you are, and, and you'll see celebrities talk about it, people who live in affluent neighborhoods talk about it. I have friends on Facebook who are who are at, in, 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 in affluent neighborhoods who still feel that way. 
And that and that is it's horrible. And I, and I thought about it today. I was, I was trying to get my grips on doing this talk, and and a lady came on television, and it's and it's it's crazy because as a parent of a black child, a black male in particular, you're fearful for them. And God knows, I mean, you know, I was a hothead in college. You know, I was I was a cocky 20-year-old with muscles. And luckily, I didn't get in a situation like that because who knows how I would have acted, right? Who knows how I would have responded to somebody treating me unfairly? And who knows how that could have ended? Right, and unless unless you walk around feeling like that, then I, you have no right to judge people who feel that way. Right, to this day, I get nervous when a cop drives up next to me. And people say, well, why would you be nervous? What are you doing it wrong? I, you're right, why should I be nervous? I don't know. I don't know. Right, the same reason I, I wore long sleeves at UC Davis. I don't know why. What I do know is I felt that way since birth. Maybe it's because I never saw anybody on television who looked like me. Maybe it's because the sexiest man alive on 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 in in Time magazine was never a black person until recently. I don't know why. All I know is that I didn't grow up feeling like my color of my skin was good enough. And I'm 48 years old now, and I've done many, many, many good things in my life, and I still feel that way. And what happened to me yesterday and today was the weirdest dichotomy. It was the weirdest dichotomy because my son is half black and half Salvadorian, half black and half Hispanic. My daughter's the same, right? Why I married somebody outside my race for whatever reason is another discussion that 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 that's crazy and 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 involves some self reflection. I love her to death, but but the fact that I didn't marry a black woman is another discussion. But she's my heart. She's my she's my world, and she gave me two beautiful babies. Right, my daughter has kinky hair, so she looks black. My son doesn't. Right, so the crazy thing about it, Narelle Narelle probably knows this. The, the crazy thing about it is a part of me is happy that my son don't look black. I'm just, a part of me is, a, is, is happy about that. Because his opportunity to survive being pulled over are greater because he looks less black. How crazy is that? And I felt happy and guilty at the same time. Because I have black friends who marry black women whose kids look black, whose, whose odds of making it through a stop are not as high as my son's. For no other reason than, than how dark their skin is. And you can get mad all you want at me, guys, and you can say, well, it's not true all you want, but you ain't been pulled over as an African-American. You haven't gone into a store as an African-American. I tell this story all the time. My wife and I, my wife will attest to this. I went into a Brooks Brothers outlet to buy a suit in 2010, maybe. I was a, I was a chief financial officer of a startup. It was a summer day, it was about 95 degrees. I was wearing a tank top and some shorts. And I went to a, a Brooks Brothers outlet store and nobody would help me. They might say, well, you dressed like you were a thug, you were, you were a tank top, and you were. There was a guy next to me, older white man, wearing a T-shirt, a dirty T-shirt, and some shorts, and he was getting helped by two people. So don't tell me how I should feel. I can't. I wish I didn't feel this way. I wish I felt the same way as everybody else. But I don't. I don't. So I watch stuff like this and I'm like, really, we're, we're still there? But then I think, 
Of course we're still there. I still feel weird driving down the street. It's hard, guys. It's hard. You know, I feel I feel I feel happy that my son looks more Hispanic than black. And I feel guilty that I feel happy about that. That's hard to stomach. That's hard for me to stomach. Because I have friends who I love dearly. Many of them are going to watch this, who I love dearly, who are African-American, who married African-American women, whose sons are dark. And the fact that I feel better about my son not being dark makes me feel guilty. It makes me feel guilty. But it's a fact. You know, I, I, just, I, hope, I hope one day we can all just like sit down and talk about stuff you know, and address it, you know, and just try to listen to people. You know, just listen to people. Right, don't assume you know if you don't. Right, don't assume you understand if you don't. Just listen, man, to each other, to your own heart. Right. And, and, you know, I'll, I'll leave with this. Right. And this is not this is not to start an argument with anybody. This is not. This is not to start a fight. You know, I have many, many friends who are not black. I mean, you know, again, I went I went to schools growing up that had few black people in it. Seaside High School here in California was the first high school I went to or school I went to where there were many black people. So I grew up around all races. I mean, and as an army brat, that's what you do. So this is not meant to be an argument, right? But I'll say this, and I, and I, I always said this argument about people, you know, who didn't believe when an African-American, I say black, when a black person talks about, you know, being unfairly treated by the, by the justice system. And I, and, I, and I asked him, I, you know, it very, it's very simple. You, you, you can only believe one of two things, right? Either you believe that black people are inherently criminal. Like we have an inherent desire, an inherent makeup to break the law. That's how we're designed more so than other races because this, the, 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 court, the courts and the, the criminal system shows that statistically we should be more prone to do crime. So either you believe that, that we're born like that, that black people are just, they're just naturally criminalistic, or you believe there's an issue with how we're treated. And a lot of it, again, the same way I, I think about who I am is the same way many other people think about who we are. And you can't really blame them either for thinking that way. You can blame them for not changing it, but you can't blame them for thinking a certain way about us when they've never been around us. And all they've seen is what I saw. And all they've heard is what I heard growing up. So either you believe that we're inherently criminal or that there's a problem with the system, with our world, with our country. That's it, there's only two choices, right? The jails and, and the prisons show that there's more of us in there. So either you believe there's a problem with the system or you believe that we are inherently more criminal. Right, the same thing with the, with, with, with the riots and all the craziness going on in the cities. Right, do I agree with that? No, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go into a Target store and break the windows and rob the place, but I don't live there. And I haven't gone through what they're going through in Minneapolis, in Chicago, in St. Louis. Right, but I do know this, either you believe Either you believe that we are crazy by nature, maybe you do, 
that black folks are crazy by nature. Maybe you do. And if you do and admit it, we can discuss it. We can learn from that. Right? I heard somebody say one thing on television. He said, if you if you want to lynch me, that's your problem. Right? And we can actually we can discuss that. Why you want to lynch me? If you have the power to lynch me, that's my problem. That was deep. I heard that today. Right? But either, going back to my, my point, either you believe that we're just crazy people. Like, look at turn television. I look at these fools rioting and, and, and burning their own their own neighborhoods down. Who would do that? They're crazy. You see, honey, watch these, watch these clowns. Maybe you believe that. Right? But if you don't, if you don't believe that that on the on on the on the hierarchy of humans that we're not lower than other races, which I hope you do for friends, if you believe we're not lower than you on the hierarchy of human races, then you must believe there's a reason they did it. You must believe the system is so skewed or so or so hurtful or so disheartening that people see no other way. There's only two choices. That's it. If there's a third one, please let me know. You either believe we're crazy and that no other race would do that, or you believe that there's something going on that makes us do that. Again, if there's a third choice I'm missing, please tell me. But that's where we need to kind of just sit down and talk about and begin to to understand all the craziness that's going on. Because if I can't tell you that it feels bad to feel black, then we can't move forward. And if you can't tell me that you're afraid of the fact that I'm black, then we can't go forward. If you can't tell me that you feel differently about me because I'm black, we can't go forward. If I can't tell you that I feel that you feel differently about me because I'm black, we can't go forward. You know, and the hard part about it is I can't really tell my son how it feels. And I can't tell my daughter how it feels. And I can't tell my wife how it feels. You know? And unfortunately, George Floyd can't tell anybody how it feels right now. So let's just pray, guys, for each other. Let's pray for George Floyd. Let's pray for even the police officers. Because again, it's it's a thought process. It's a mindset that they inherited right they need to be held accountable for it but they inherited it and if we don't figure out what 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 kind of mindset we are inheriting as black people and not black people we can't fix it if we ignore it if we argue about it if we fight about it we can't fix it and we got to fix it we got to fix it we got to fix it, guys. All right? I love you guys. Um, have a good weekend. And, uh, again, let's just pray for each other um, and love each other and listen to each other. All right, guys. I love you. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.